but Rose, she doesn't know what's coming, you know? And I am, I'm going to be a boogie woman. Cuckoo. Hello, I'm Cavassier, the goddamn Newt. This is part two of our look at what went down psychologically between Ioana Young Jacek and Rose Namajunas in their build-up to UFC 217. The previous episode saw Rose begin to develop a psychological strategy to defend herself against Ioana's mind games. In this episode, we'll take a closer look at Ioana's changing tactics and reaction to Rose's continued development and ability to stand up for herself. The NYC Presser. You're not really appearing to get into Rose's head, and you know she is a top, top-level fighter. Are you taking her seriously? Uh, I'm always taking my opponent seriously, and I show uh, the respect, the way how I work at the gym. Ioana is asked specifically about Rose and whether she's taking her seriously. With the first words out of her mouth, Ioana moves the discussion of Rose from the specific to the general. I'm always taking my opponent seriously. I'm always taking my opponent seriously and... Implicit to Robin Black's question is that Rose presents a unique set of problems as a fighter. So he's asking if she's prepared uniquely for Rose and her skill set. For this fight, I was working for... I was working 13 weeks every day, twice a day for this fight. After dismissing the essence of Robin's question, Joanna puts the focus squarely on herself. But there is only one strawy queen of the world and it's me, Joanna, the champion. And everyone knows that. Joanna doubles down, putting the focus on herself. And of course, when you get to the top, they want to see you fall. But I give them no chance to see this, you know? I give I'm not gonna give them the displeasure, so, uh, like, I'm not gonna give chance to Rose on Saturday, November 4th. Rose, you, yeah, you don't look you do. like you're particularly enjoying this. Uh, would you rather not be at the press conference? Do you just want to get at the fight? Oh, uh, what makes you think I'm not enjoying this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gotta say shit, I just sit here and do it, and that's my job. <laughs> The first question of the presser for Rose isn't a question, but a statement. Rose, you don't look like you're particularly enjoying this. He's not wrong. She doesn't present as happy or comfortable, but there's something creepy about this guy. That's the first time you smiled since you wore tears. Yeah, nobody done asked me no questions. The last thing Rose needs is a birdie wooster calling her out on her social anxiety. Rose, yeah, you don't look like you're particularly enjoying this. Uh, would you rather not be at the press conference? Do you just want to get at the fight? Rose fires the question back at him. Uh, what makes you think I'm not enjoying this? She prepared for the attacks from Ioana. Her defensive reaction suggests she didn't expect the MMA media to poke at her vulnerability so ham-handedly. Birdie's an over-anxious goof himself. <laughs> just the way I like him! He stammers and Rose lets him off the hook with a smile and awkward joke. Uh, what makes you think I'm not enjoying this? Uh, <laughs> I ain't gotta say shit, I just sit here and do it, and that's my job. <laughs> but the bleeding bastard can't let it go. That's the first time you smiled since you wore tins. Yeah, nobody done asked me no questions. <laughs> what does he hope to prove by forcing Rose to defend herself against a charmless bantam? This is what I wanted, you know, I wanted to be in the belly of the beast. I wanted to be as scary as possible. I wanted to fight Joanna at her best where she wanted. To. From out of an awkward morass, the new Rose shows herself. This is what she prepared for. And this is what Rose wants, to be in the belly of the beast. It's subtle, but this is the angle Rose found to rally around. This is what I wanted, you know, I wanted to be in the belly of the beast. I wanted to be it as scary as possible. I wanted to fight Joanna at her best where she wanted to. And this is what I want and this is where I'm at. She controls the mic. She's making declarative statements and punctuating with firm head nods. Gone is the wishy-washy uncertainty. Rose is strong and resolute. Joanna notices the change in Rose. She interrupts to inject more poisonous doubt into the situation. And this is what I want, and this is where I'm at. 
first off, thank this, you. This is what I'm expecting, but I think this press conference is a little bit too much. And after the uh, second phase of, uh, she going, she she's going to be more st stressing out about my, our fight on Saturday. So I think you cannot be the champion because you just can't do this. You can't deal with the media. You cannot deal with the pressure. It's too much for you. Unfortunately, this comes off as forced. More st stressing out. Yuano attempts to ratchet the pressure up by predicting Rose will show special weakness after their next face-off. A word to the wise, before you drag your foe into deep waters, make damn sure you don't get a cramp. Yeah, th this fight here, if she wins on Saturday night, she will tie Ronda Rousey. And boss, then there her is next no. Fight, boss, there is no the if. Record. There is no if. I will. will break, you know this. Break the record. You know. Doth she protest too much? Perhaps a little drunk on victory wine. It's more about my legacy. It's all about staying undefeated, and it's more impo important than all of the, this record. I will retire in the future. Uh, in the future, as undefeated. I have this chance. I have this opportunity, I, and I will make this happen. Yuana shows where her mind is focused. At least we know she takes her legacy seriously. I'm humble, I'm focused, I'm still passionate about it, you know. Uh, I feel like I, I feel like that I'm going to fight for a title. So I, I, I'm that hungry like I was two years ago when I fought Carla Esparza for the straw belt. This is just a fraction of what Yuana said at the press conference. It's not that any single thing she said was wrong or bad, it's just she seems to have too much material, too many talking points. Let me be focused on this fight for the next two days. I have a few surprises for you guys, I have a few aces in my pocket, and we will talk about with Joe Rogan after my fight, but we will see, definitely I want to break the record, uh, Ronda Rose's record, I want to defend my title, the story division, even if I will move up, uh, to 125 division, uh, I will still defending my title in the strawway and the flyweight. Maybe then I will move up to bantamweight division. I don't know what's coming. This is a little like a 10-year-old practicing an imaginary acceptance speech alone in a room. Joanna chooses to make this the moment to go all in. She strides out and shows her cards and expects Rose to fold, but Rose has altered her mind since last they faced. She doesn't go up there with an empty vessel this time. She's filled with self-possession now. Her mind is focused. Joanna tries to double down by going all metaphysical and saying she'll take her soul. It's a silly thing for her to say. Joanna's a highly technical point fighter. Even in her two wins by TKO, she couldn't knock her opponent down. They were both standing stoppages over non-strikers. That's why you don't hear Mighty Mouse say things like this. You can be a damn great champion and have no ability to scare anyone. Aw, oh, don't you just want to hug the little fella? Joanna failed to understand who and what she is. And when she doesn't get the reaction from Rose she needs, it's the fist of the face. Amazing, Rose gives no fucks. Unfortunately, Joanna made herself the jerk. So, like, why did, if you was gonna touch me, why you, why you look away? Like, weren't you ready walk, for something, yeah. you know? Like, and, and she touched away. me and said, oh, yeah, you know, fuck that shit. We see how fully Rose has come out from under the shadow of Joanna. After this fight, you will respect me more than you can even fucking imagine. Conversely, heading into the final face-off, Joanna has moved into a fantasy where she's fabricated a new persona for herself. Joanna has lost all her power. It's Rose who casts her away with a single motion of her hand. You keep talking to her, what are you saying to her? I'm just saying the Lord's Prayer. This is the kind of authentic crazy that should be a cause for concern. They all, they all want me to look bad. Pat Berry said to a woman from my team that she's a bitch. I never talk about family members, team members of my opponents, but they did that and they want me to look bad. I'm so sorry, 
Boogie Woman is coming tomorrow and she doesn't know what's coming. And I have a surprise for you guys. Don't blink tomorrow. Believe me, I put on such a great camp. Boogie Woman is coming for heroes. Cringy. This is weird, bordering on delusion. Boogie Woman is coming for heroes. Look at the way Ioana grips at the microphone with mad desperation and she clinches up her whole face like a six-year-old begging for a pony. Boogie Woman is coming for heroes. Not good. Things seem to have gone off the rails for Ioana, while Rose looks like the soul snatcher at this point. Well, that's how I see it. Ioana became desperate for a reaction from Rose and lost part of herself in its pursuit. What the hell was that whole, I'm the boogie woman? Sorry, but that's not a thing. Ioana jumped the shark a little bit in this build-up, while Rose found something inside herself to build on. In the final episode, we'll explore the psychology behind Ioana's boogie woman persona, why she needed it and what she hoped to achieve from it. We'll also closely examine the body language of their walkouts, their behavior in the octagon during introductions, and uh, the fight itself. Thanks for taking time to watch. It means a lot. If you have comments or questions, leave them in the comments section below or over on the Twitters. Remember, this isn't supposed to be easy.